Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Florocraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Florocraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com Travel around the world on this season of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. We're visiting a different country each episode and learning about their culture and traditions through crafts. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors and markers and toothpicks and even a ruler on hand. Remember, be creative. It's fine to change colors or patterns to make your project your own. So let's learn about different countries with fun craft ideas. Egypt is located in North Africa. Most of the population is near the Nile River since the desert covers much of the rest of the country. Our crafts are inspired by ancient Egypt and common symbols of this country. Our first craft is appropriately a pyramid. It's a well-known symbol of Egypt. Next, we create the Pharaoh's Cobra headdress in paper. Then, it's a 3D asp or snake made from an old tie. Finally, learn some of the symbols of hieroglyphics and make your own message. So let's get started. We can't talk about Egypt without making a pyramid. A pyramid is where the outer surfaces are triangular and converge at a point. The most famous pyramids are the huge structures built of brick or stone, some of which are among the world's largest constructions. The largest is in Egypt. It was one of the seven wonders of the world and the only one of the seven to survive into modern times. So here's what you'll need for your pyramid. We're gonna start out with colored sand. We're gonna be using orange today, but you could use any color. We also have foam board. We're using some opaque markers and we have two types of glue, a thick glue and a thinner school glue. We also have on hand some paint and then here um, some styrofoam bricks a dowel rod, and a few wood shapes. And your basic tools, you want to have scissors. I also have a cutting knife here, but this is only to be used with adult supervision and a brush. So let's get started. Now the first thing we want to do is take our foam board and cut it. If you could see on foam core, there is a foam core between paper. I've cut this with scissor, and, and it's fine if it's a rough edge. But if you want a more clean edge, you can also cut it with a craft knife. Then we want to paint the surface. I'm just going to take a little bit of the um, fawn or tan color paint, take my brush and spread it around. And remember I said don't worry about the edges. You can go right on to the edge with your paint and also since we're working with sand we can also sprinkle some sand on the edge as well. I kind of like that rougher edge. It's a little bit more natural. So let's put that one aside because I've got one all painted here. Now we're ready to move on to building our structure. And before we really do that, let's make some bricks in different colors. Now these little bricks are little styrofoam shapes. They can be rolled to round them off a little bit. They can be edged. So you can create little, uh, little variations in the shape because we want them to kind of look uh, sand worn just like the real pyramids. Now this one I coat it with sand and to do that I'm going to take one of the plain ones I'm going to coat it with some of the thinner glue which is the uh, lighter weight glue and then I've thinned it even more with a little bit of water. 
Now we don't have to brush the entire brick and I kind of really would like it to have a little bit more weathered. So I'm going to dip it in my sand and roll it over. So I've got a kind of a really thick coat here but a thinner coat on the side. Let's do another one. I just want that variegated look. I don't want them to be too perfect. Okay, now we're ready to start building. To start building, we want to use a heavier glue because styrofoam has all these little nooks and crannies and we want to make sure that it really has a tight bond. So I'm going to start on the side and put a layer of glue and I'm going to start building. Now, we can build a pattern of a solid, all, all orange, all or orange and brown, do it in an angle. So we're going to kind of play with it a little bit. So let's first start alternating. I'm going to add a little bit more glue on that one. And we also can go back and put some more glue in between and kind of throw some sand on it to do like a grout line. So for right now, let's alternate colors and build all the way around. Now, we continue building all the way around. I've got one that's all set with the alternating colors. Now, to do the next step, we're going to build on the inside. Now these, let's just use the plain colors because that's then going to give us a surface to do the two so that it's nice and sturdy. Now we're gonna add some bricks to the center as well. And I'm just gonna place these in rather than um, gluing them in just so you can kind of get the idea of how these go inside of each other. And I'll keep nesting in because remember, we're gonna be building up at an angle and we want them to have something to rest on. So now, again, we're gonna go and staggering our bricks, we're gonna start building. And I'm going to go with the, the plain colored and then an orange and a plain color and an orange. And then continue around. Then because I have, every time I put on another row, I'm going to have to put something to the inside as well. But oops, let's take a plain one on the inside until we can have a structure that is sitting on itself and keep building up until you get all the way to the top. Now we have one other step. I've taken a little quarter inch dowel just to add a little bit more to my kind of diorama here. And I'm going to paint it with a brown opaque marker. I've got one all painted here. And then I've also taken my green or my little wood shapes that kind of look like a, a tree and I've painted those as well with the green marker. And I'm gonna use my really thick glue and glue them on, overlapping them onto my branch just to make a tree. So let's take a look at our finished pyramid. Our next project is a Pharaoh's Cobra headdress. The figure of the serpent is an emblem of royalty and is shown on many Egyptian rulers. Children wore a special hairstyle in ancient Egypt. The hair was shaved except for a side lock on the left side. They often decorated their hair with amulets and small fish to protect them from the dangers of the Nile. Let's see what we need to make our own headdress. We need some 3D glitter glue, a glue stick, a styrofoam egg, some gemstones, especially two small red ones, cardstock in blue, yellow, and red construction paper, thick tacky glue, black plastic lacing, and for our tools we'll need some tape, pinking shears, which are zigzag cutting scissors, regular scissors, a hole punch, a craft stick, and a craft knife. Let's get started by learning how to paint an egg gold. The first thing we're gonna do is cut the styrofoam egg in half with the, star with the plastic knife. This looks like a good sign. And we're just gonna use a craft knife to spread paint over the egg. And I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time and then spread it over it, almost like icing. And once you get a nice even coating of glitter, you can set it aside and leave it to dry. While we're waiting for that to dry, let's start cutting out our pieces for the headdress. Go to our website to find the pattern for the cobra. And you can see I've already printed it out, traced it onto the corresponding papers, and started cutting them out. And you just want to get all your pieces lined up before you start gluing. 
The other thing you'll need to do is cut a two inch by 28 inch strip of the blued cardboard right here. Now, I'm gonna just lay my pieces out and I've already actually have one started. And you can see how I've glued the body of the cobra. I cut my mouth out with the zigzag scissors and glued it at the top and then glued the stones around the sides. Now I'm gonna trace the middle part, which is where we'll glitter here in a minute with a pencil. And this just makes our pattern sort of our roadmap so we know where to put glitter. Okay, now the other thing we need to do is make the little fold in the cobra's mouth. And all I'm gonna do is use a straight edge to make a bend and then continue bending that down. Very easy. And while I've got that bent down, I can go ahead and add my rhinestone eyes. This adds quite a bit of sparkle to the top of your headdress. I'm just gonna make two dots and push my eyes into place. Look at that, fantastic. Okay, now we're gonna glue the egg so the large part of the egg is up at the top towards the cobra's chest. And I'm just using thick tacky glue and putting it in place. The next thing we're gonna do is outline the rest of the body with glitter glue. And I'm just making a nice heavy line. And then I'm gonna come around the back side of my egg. And then make some lines across the front. Don't worry if it yours goes out of place like that, just let it dry a little bit and then pull it off. And I've got one here that's started or already finished with the lines. The other thing you can do is make lines of glitter around the outside of your gemstones. Lastly, we need to glue a stone on the belly of the cobra and this will add some more sparkle and you can take a look at our finished one to see how it'll look. Once, once you get this in place, you can fit it to your head and see it's adjustable so you can make it large or small. And then you'll just use a piece of tape to secure the sizing. Now to make that side lock. I've gone ahead and cut 12 18 inch pieces of lacing and then took a smaller piece of lacing and tied it in a knot right in the center. Now this is really handy to have a friend hold this while you braid it. But what you're gonna do is break this down into three sections and braid it. And your friend would hold right here. So I'm going to braid this little bit and I actually have a finished one to, to show you right here that I've braided all the way down and then you take a shorter piece of lacing and tie it at the end of the braid. Now, it goes on the left hand side. So what you're gonna do is just poke a hole in the side of your headdress and then take the tail and tie it in a snug knot. And now you have a, si a side lock. Take a look at our finished one. Our next project is a snake. The asp was a symbol of royalty, but it's also a poisonous snake used in ancient Egypt as a way to execute criminals. So here's what you'll need to make ours. We're going to use an old tie. Then we've got either foam or felt in red and white. We've got polyfill or any kind of filling, some thick glue, wiggly eyes, a couple pins, and a metal hanger. Then for tools, make sure you have on hand a ruler, a plastic knife, a stick or dowel, and some craft snips, and your regular scissors too. So the first thing we wanna do is to take our egg, and we have cut that egg in half, and then we're gonna round it a little bit on the corner of our table just to make it a little bit smaller. Then we wanna take our tie, and we're gonna cut about five inches off the end of the tie. Snip that off. Now don't do this with any of your dad's good ties. You wanna have those old ones. So let's set that aside. Now next we wanna start making our body of the snake. 
And to do that, we want to seal off that end. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue and you want it to be nice and thick on that end because it's a, uh, um, you're gluing fabric to fabric. So you want a nice quick bond. So what I'm going to do is pin that just for a little bit here until it dries. So we'll put that away. Now it's time to put our hanger. So what I've done is I've taken a normal, just a plain old metal hanger and with some adult supervision, you can have an adult do it, use your craft snips or wire snips to trim this end off so you have a nice wire piece. And it's going to be right about the right size for your snake. Now slide our tie over that and then little by little we're going to add our craft foam. And this is what you need that sticker dowel because you're going to have to really push that down. And what I found was the easiest is to gather my snake pretty much all the way past I'll show you this. Slide it all down so that you're stuffing to the bottom first and then keep pulling up. Now this is going to take a little bit of time so be patient when you're doing it and you want to get as much as you can down in there so that it's nice and full. I'm going to set this one aside because I've got one already. So this one is all stuffed down and this is a paisley tie. Now the next step is to add my styrofoam. So I've taken this egg. In fact, let me go back to this one so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to glue that styrofoam inside the top of the tie right there, which is the step I've already completed here. Now, this turns to this side so that this is a flat piece right here. Now I'm going to take that other piece that I cut off and I'm going to make the face of the snake. So let's put two dots of glue and put my eyes on top and then I'm going to take a little scrap of the uh, white foam and a little piece of the red foam and what I've done is I've cut out the tongue and I've cut out a couple fangs and I'm just going to glue those to the underside. So slide that right on. Now, you know what, these are going to have to set a little bit, so this might stick to the counter when we lift this up, we'll see. Put those fangs in. Then, what I want to do is, I'm also going to cut out of the piece, or pattern piece, um, this, the hood of the cobra. I'm going to have that piece there. So now I want to glue this to the back before I put my black piece on. And you're going to want to really be generous with your glue. And I'm going to put a little pin to hold this in place just right now while we're working. So that's his head coming off the front. Now I'm going to take the hood and instead of putting the glue on the hood, I'm going to put the glue on the back here. So that's really a generous amount of glue. And you can see the seam of the tie is there too. And at home, you know what, you're going to take a lot more time to make sure you've got a really nice thick layer of glue. And I'm going to pin this onto the top, or glue this onto the top. Press that in place. Then add another little tiny bit of glue right here to bring that tip of the hood down. Let's cover that whole thing down. Oops, let me slide this just a little bit up farther so it's all covered. And there you have your snake. Take a look at our finished asp. Our final project is a board written in hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics refers to the characters made by drawing figures. The word means sacred carving and was a formal writing system used by the ancient Egyptians. To make our board, here's what you'll need. I have sand, and I'm going to just use the neutral color, but you could choose another color. I'm going to use a bifold foam board. I'm using um, a washable glue. I've got some thick twine, and I've got various colors of brown paint and also some ivory paint. Then some basic things. I need pins, some Q-tips, a plastic knife, a one-inch brush, and some craft snips. So let's get started. 
Now the first thing we want to do is rather than do that whole board to start out with, I'm going to do just one letter so we can kind of get the idea of the technique and then you can do a message board that has a whole kind of message on it. So first I've taken one square of foam board and I'm going to kind of rough up the edges. So I'm going to just cut into it maybe curve around the edge. You don't want this to be too neat. This is not one of those times where you want to cut really perfectly. Um, and then on the website, I'm going to have a lot of different patterns for letters and figures. But you know what? Anything that is a figure that will give a message can be a form of hieroglyphics. So first we've got our board. Now the next step that we want to do is to paint our um, lay out our letter on the board. So let's choose, I don't know, let's do a B to start out with. Now what we're going to do is lay down our glue, but I'm going to pin it down first so that we can uh, figure out our form. So let's, let me put a layer of glue to the letter I want to make. Okay, and that maybe can symbolize a person. It doesn't have to be a letter. And then I'm going to take my pin, start my design and then curve around the glue. And I'll keep adding pins as needed to keep that glue down. And I continue all the way around until I have the design exactly the way I want it. Now remember if we're doing the big board we're going to be putting a message all the way not just one letter. So let's set that aside. I've got one all ready here. The glue is dried as you can see it's Dry, uh, dry clear and I'll remove my pins. Now I want to take my flat brush and I'm going to dip my brush in my ivory paint and put a coat of paint over the entire surface. Now whether you're doing one letter or all the letters, this will be your first step. I've got a little bit of the other uh, beige paint in there, as, or I'm sorry, the tan paint, which is fine because that's going to be my next step anyway. So I'm going to go in, get in all those crevices, and I want, I'm using a brush rather than a foam brush because I want to see those brush strokes. Then let's add a little bit more beige paint here and a little bit more ivory. And I'm just using a little piece of foil as my palette. I'm going to dip in and dip a little in the brown and then I'm going to kind of use an X stroke to get that color in. What I'm trying to do is establish so that it's got that kind of a rock like surface. Now there's a couple ways to add the sand. You can take a cup and put the sand in and add the glue in or you can actually sprinkle a little glue on your wet paint which will stick or add a little bit of glue to the surface. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue in some of the spots and I'm just using my brush. I know it kind of seems odd to, this is kind of a different way, a little bit messier way to paint. I'm adding it to those wet glue. I want it to have that weathered look. Let's get a little bit in there. Now shake off the excess. See if I've got exactly, that kind of looks good. So now I'm going to dip my brush. Uh, let's take the Q-tip for a little bit more control. I'm going to dip it in the dark brown and I'm going to go over that letter to make it a little bit darker. Now, if you want, you want that board to really look aged, we're going to want to do those edges too. So let's take our paint. I'm mixing it all up on my palette. I've even got sand in my brush. And there's the first letter of our hieroglyphic board. Now let's take a look at our finish. What do you think that they were trying to tell us in those pictures? Maybe you can devise your own message on a board and have a message and that can sit on your desk or maybe even make it into your name. And that's our show on Egypt. Next week is our final country and culture. We'll be visiting Scotland. Hope you can join us.
Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects, are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is Program 1312. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands-On Crafts for Kids, Crafts Around the World, Series 1300, is available for $49.99, plus $6 shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Travel to distant lands with Hands-On. Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Floracraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Floracraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com <laughs>